Hello. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully we're live. And you may notice a slightly different scene to what we normally have. Just wait for it to come up. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, thanks for joining us. Shout out to uh, Midnight Joker. Just going to check our, our screen a little bit closer. Yeah, shout out to Midnight Joker. This, uh, this, this video is basically on the back of um, this live stream, sorry, is on the back of a, of a request that you made. And um, apologies as well if I'm a little bit darker and a little bit sort of not fully in focus because I was trying to get focused on our spoons. And I'm going to split this live stream into two parts. One part is talking about symbols. So as I said, thanks to Midnight Joker, it was yourself who asked us you were asking us um, if we could do a live stream talking about Love Spoon Symbols. I think you're interested in making one yourself, so fantastic. Brilliant other people making Love Spoons because it keeps the tradition alive. And that's ultimately what, you know, what we want, what we want to do then as, as a family workshop. So yeah, brilliant. Um, so we're going to look, starting off, we're going to look at some of the symbols and stories Hopefully as well, we're going to do a little bit of myth busting because there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are said, um, a lot of things written about the love spoon tradition, and there's certain areas then that maybe we're going to clear up. As I'm as I'm speaking as well, any questions as always, get them into us and, and we will do our best to answer them. So if we start off then the history of of the love spoon. Basically, we claim it as a Welsh tradition. Reason for that, the earliest dated love spoon is dated 1667. It's in the Folk Museum in St. Fagans, and it's made and it's displayed here in Wales. So that's why we claim it as a Welsh tradition. There are similar customs, there are similar traditions all around the world, similar ideas, but ultimately, Wales is the origin of the love spoon tradition. So that's the sort of background on it. When it comes to symbols then, um, there are, are lists, there are ideas. There's a lot being written on it. There's a lot of lists that have been produced over the last sort of 50 years. And they're, they're, they're almost promoted as definitive guides. This is what this means. That is what that means. That's what the other means. First thing that I always sort of say to people when they start saying, oh, I want this because of this, this, and this, I always say, yeah, it's nice, but it is open to interpretation. So when it comes to symbols, you can interpret them in different ways. So that's the nice thing. So for Midnight Joker, yeah, you're going to have a go at making a spoon. That's the first thing I would say for yourself is be aware that you can have your own interpretation. So, what do we mean by that? Well, uh, let's take a symbol like the treble clef. Okay, so we got that spoon there, the treble clef. Now, um, oh, I'll just make this comment, two seconds. Tommy's workshop, hello, nice to have you with us. There we are, we're just talking a little bit about love spoons and symbols and things. Thank you for joining us again. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, so let's talk about a treble clef and a love spoon. What can it mean? Well, it can mean different things to different people. For some people, it can be a love for music. Uh, music then is nice on life's journey. Um, what do they say? Music is the food of love. So what I'm getting at then is symbols can be interpreted in different ways. There are traditional symbols, so things like anchors and nautical themes, those are traditional love spoon symbols. So one idea with an anchor is its strength, stability, putting down your roots. But again, it may be that somebody has spent a life working at sea. So you can use symbols in different ways. You can interpret them in different ways. Now with our own spoons, these are the ones that I focused on here. They all have a story to tell. So if I pick out this one as an example, there we go. That one, you've got links and seeds. We've just been joined here by Thomas and Woodcarver. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one there, we've got two traditional symbols, links and seeds. Two traditional love spoon symbols. A couple of things with this then. Normally, well, 
ourselves always, but normally you would carve them from one single solid block of wood. Um, and that's the traditional way to do it. But again, no rules or regs. There are different interpretations of our ideas. So these symbols are popular ones for recording the birth of a child or recording children. So you've got your two seeds, you've got your two links. But again, there are other interpretations. The, the idea of a link, marriage, um, you know, linked together, this sort of idea. So they are used for those things. And we've depicted children in lots of different ways. You can carve an initial inside a heart. You can carve an acorn, the hope that the acorn will grow into a mighty oak. So, yeah, when it comes to symbols, when it comes to um, the love spoon, it's sort of take it with a pinch of salt, really. There are, there are lots of symbols, there are lots of ideas. Ultimately, what I would suggest, when you have a go at making your own spoon, if it's for yourself or whoever you're making it for, you want to tell a story. You want to get a message across through your, your love spoon. I, I, got, I bring Dad in on this. Um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts then when it comes to symbols and love spoon? Well, there's, there's no end, really, to the uh, difference. Uh, it's as diverse as life itself, really. You, you can put whatever you want to. Yeah. You know, and we, we get requests depending on... I'm trying to think some of the, the ones we're working on at the moment. Um, we had one uh, linked to a, a, a rugby international, so he played for a particular club. So, you, you know, you can tie it in with that. You can tie it in with, with you know, the, the, those symbols involved in farming. So we've, we've carved, the, you know, if it's a dairy farmer, you can carve a cow on there. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how much, you know, you can sort of do. And that's basically what we're trying to say then with symbols is to tell a story. That one there, the star, you put that on there, that, that comes to my nana. One day your little star will shine. So it tells a story. It portrays a message. And for us then, that's what we're getting across is that, as opposed to being worried about using a symbol and getting it wrong and things like that, I think it's more important to sort of um, tell your story through it. I, 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 you know, you can interpret it sort of in, I, in different of, ways. One of the points you, you asked what I thought. Yeah. One, one of the <laughs> things, if you speak to one of the things that, that, that have developed on over the years is the fact that um, people Do you want to just who come in? Okay. Um, I can not sit down, can I? Oh, no, you, you can't be seen. You've got to stand okay. up. I've got to stand up. Oh, that's yeah. great. And he's always making it work. Um, yeah. A number of people that have come in to um, love spoon carving over the years have um, assumed certain things about the tradition. And so they say, oh, um, this, is, this means something or this means that. And, and they, they put rules and regulations that are yeah. just not there. So, and, and they've said things about the tradition that's right. that they can't prove or disprove then, you know? So, yeah, that's why we're just sort of, yeah, putting those ideas on there. Just to start, yeah, you can interpret it in different ways. You can have your own ideas. And that's the thing is that you can make your love spoons unique to yourself. What I'm going to do now then, I'm just going to alter around and I'm going to put the, um, the camera now on the bench. And I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate some carving. Just while we're doing that, then I don't know if you want to start there. But just in the vice, put in either the cupid one. So we're going to have to adjust as well. We'll adjust the camera. Let's have a little look here. Where do you start on this one, Dave? You, do you want it on the on the top? On the you know, if I was if I was carving that, I'd be carving that little bit at the top. Yeah, so, but, but what do you, which, which part do you want to carve there first? Notice we put a block underneath as well, underneath the vice. Actually, we've got Midnight Joker with us. It was, it was yourself who, uh, who inspired this, this, this live stream. So, is, yeah, is, that, is that okay, Dave, or, that, or is that okay, better? Okay. There we are. Now, hopefully, I would say that's hopefully probably. Hopefully, we've got that in focus. That's probably. Yeah, that's better that. there, I think. Yeah, so have you got any other thoughts when it comes to any other thoughts when it comes to symbols, the tradition, that sort of thing? Well, I, I, I'm gonna, I know I'm harping on now, but one of the things that you know it isn't necessary 
is people put rules and regulations on it and they try to make some kind of mystery about it and they say oh this is what it means this is what it meant and and it just is you know it goes back to the 17th century the earliest spoon as you know 1667 so nothing was ever recorded nothing was written down about it at that time so um, I'm just going to adjust that camera you know, fraction again, excuse me. Especially in today's society, yeah, nice you know, we're absolutely inundated with rules and regulations. You know, <laughs> whatever you do today, we're regulated. So that's what's so nice about the love spoon. We're not regulated by it. Exactly. So, yeah, so when it comes to... Anyone then, I think you've got a few comments on there if you want to check with me. When it comes to anybody who's going to have a go then at making their own spoon, don't restrict yourself. Don't feel that you've got to use, you know, because we've been involved with the tradition for 50 years um, through, you know, Dad starting it in 1969, our, our journey with the Love Spoon. And in that time, we've seen all sorts of articles and all sorts of ideas where people have put rules and regs in place. One we saw where, where people were saying there was a particular wood. I think it was sycamore that was, you know, they were saying that our oh, love spoon has to be made from that wood. Why? Where, where was that written down? And they were saying because they would have been cooking utensils. But basically, there's, there's always a counter argument because the first thing with that argument is, yes, there, there is a, an element of truth with it. But sycamore is not actually a native um, tree here in Wales. It was sort of brought in, in in the Middle Ages. So there's there's always a counter argument to it. So you can use different woods. The nice thing as well with symbols, we mentioned the nautical theme. Um, sailors, they used to carve them. That's good for us because it means we can use timbers that aren't native to Wales. So what we're carving here is a piece of reclaimed, a piece of recycled mahogany. And the love spoon, you can tell your story, you can get your, um, your messages, your stories into your, your work. So referring to, some of you may have seen us doing it, I'll just put it on in front of the camera there. This is our spoon for recording this year. Uh, Tommy, uh, the, Tommy, last Tommy year, sorry. Workshop. He says a lot of things in woodworking and other things that say you must do this and that. Yeah, it's, true. it's spot on. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's very interesting where, um, and there's a lot of, I think the word, am I, I, I think the word that would come to my mind is convention. Yeah. And it, it sort of convention develops then into, into fact. Uh, I mean, for instance, we're in an area of Wales, we're in Pembrokeshire in West Wales, and there's actually a style of love spoon and people will ask us, they say, oh, you haven't got a Pembrokeshire love spoon. Basically what it is, there was a, a, a carver or a few carvers in Pembrokeshire that carved in a specific style. And then it became known as the Pembrokeshire love spoon. Um, Another thing about... reason, just to, just to explain, the reason we don't make it is it's not the most attractive style of love spoon. Another thing I think about love spoon carving yeah. is um, competition. Yeah, absolutely. You, there, you know, there's there isn't competition. Yeah, because there's no know, need for anything it. Anything at the oh, you know, oh, he's the best. That's right. Woodcut. Because I served my apprenticeship in a joiner's shop. Yeah. You know, they, they tended to be oh, you had to do it this particular way, and somebody else would say no, it's the way that way, and and so there's always competition, you know. Yeah. Uh, but love spoon carving, it you it can doesn't... take out that competition. Because you can because you can have different styles. You can yeah, have different. And, and approaches and behind um, it, it's the thought. Yes, it's that person. Absolutely. And I've said this a number of times. Um, if somebody isn't particularly, um, I think ability level is not important, is yeah, it? In right. some ways, um, the less the less ability, ability that you've got, the more of an impact your spoon yeah. can potentially have for yeah. for the recipient. You know, it's somebody, so, somebody that's always been considered to be. Oh, in Pembrokeshire, we've got a word kift. Yeah, which means, two left, which, a bit which means lack in coordination, I That's think. That's right. Be the, and then somebody turns around and then manages to... 
and they managed to make a love spoon, yeah. what a, you know, what, a, what an it, effect it has that, that has more of an on impact. the person that's receiving it. It's, uh, so yeah, when it comes to, again, going back to it, the symbols, um, I think it's thinking in, I, I, I would say, is thinking in the recipient, um, you know, what do they like? What are they interested in? Do you want to check a few of the comments yeah, okay. on that? Um, what do, what's significant for yourselves? Um, and what would you like to put on your spoons? Some of the popular symbols we do regularly, you've got things like flowers, national emblems. So, uh, for instance, the USA, we do a number of spoons. Our love spoons, you know, the, the tradition is popular in the US. So we quite often, we've done spoons with eagles on them. And we do the dragon, the pen dragon. The dragon, national emblem of Wales, but it can also represent protection. So um, those are some ideas. For England, popular symbols, the rose. For well, I, Scotland, I, the thistle. I, I don't know what these comments are, Dave, because uh, we're yeah. in a different world here. Tommy's workshop, that sounds right. like marketing. Um, art subless, message deleted by the Google moderator team. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, oh dear. I someone's, joke, uh, someone's had a comment deleted, but I don't think it's because no, you, you just get others sometimes coming in. Mark, this is the Pembrokeshire love spoon, and you need to buy this. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, it is. There is, is it? over the years, there's been a lot of marketing, and that's basically that's what I was getting at in my introduction, is that the lists, these ideas that you will see, they started being produced in the sixties, and why was that? The tradition started to become more commercial, and you, so you're spot on. When when the tradition became more commercial, um, I mean to give you our background. Up until 1994, Dad didn't. He, he, he you wouldn't actually sell anybody a love spoon, would you? Oh, you yeah. you would get people to That's make right. their own spoon. We used to help to help people and, to and design the, and make a spoon. And that was you know we we stuck with that for um, what 30 years. Um, 20, 20, 30 years, that if you wanted a love spoon with ourselves, you would have to come and make it yourself. I, I don't know, the you reason... Have, what's that? Here, no. Right? And I, but I read it about the Mahogany. A message deleted by the Google moderator team. Right. Tommy's workshop, Google was deleting comments the other day for no reason. So, um, what he was saying was, with the Mahogany that we're using... Yeah. Um... You know, where did it come from? It was reclaimed. Reclaimed, so. yeah. That was our, that was our, one of our Christmas presents from uh, Peter from Clenetley. He brought us down some, some mahogany. It's more and more difficult to get hold of the mahogany. Um, the, the reason for that is we get it. We recycle it and reclaim it. It's the same as things like teak. We don't see as much of it now. It's, it's where people... Well, say it there, dear. End stream. No, we don't want to press that. That'll, okay. that'll cut us off. <laughs> We uh, see how, how, how Thomas the Woodcarver's is learning about the computer here. Um, yeah, so um, the, the mahogany's, it's all recycled, all reclaimed. Um, this one, I would suggest it's something like a, a piece of utility. So one of the better quality African mahogany's. The reason, as I said, that we can use um, things like mahogany's is because we um, we link the tradition with those sailors and early love spoons that you'll see in Wales, they'd be made from things like teak, mahogany, all, all sorts of different woods from all sorts of different places. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the truth of it is, the love spoon is there to be enjoyed by everyone. You can make your design as complex or as simple as, as you want to. Um, you know, you'll see very elaborate Love spoon designs, we get asked ourselves to make some really elaborate, intricate designs, but you can get as much pleasure out of a simple design as, as some of the more, more complex and more, more elaborate ones. It's just a lovely tradition, really. Have you got any other thoughts, Thomas Woodcarver, on... Uh... Well, I think it's just a nice thing to do to get, you know... You can be two people, three people, four people making it for an anniversary for parents or something like that. That's right. And, and you can design it then together and, and sort of work together. Now, now um, another thing, 
Another thing I wanted to share with everybody today, um, and let us know, let us know in the uh, in the comments there. And I won't tell you the full story with it, but is anybody familiar with Welsh Valentine's Day? Does anybody know anything about it? Let us know in the comments section before before I explain it. So there we are. It's the reason. It's one of the reasons that we try and claim Wales to be the most romantic country in the world. So let's, let's, let's see, has anybody got any ideas? And we have had it linked in with the Love Spoon. There isn't actually a link between it, um, but it's a very interesting, it's an interesting background, that one there. Uh, going back to as well, yeah, the reason that um, we stopped having people in to, to actually make spoons uh, to help people make their own. The reason we stopped doing that, it was it was twofold. It was one was we just didn't have time, and fewer fewer people were wanting to make their own spoons. Um, and the final one then it, it was health and safety. Yeah. With all the rules and regs, you know, we always try our best to 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 say you know any woodworking you're doing, you do it at your own risk, and you need to be careful. Any comments on the uh, Welsh Valentines? No comments on the Welsh Valentines. Say twin win. Here we are. Did, did somebody put it? Did somebody get it? Yeah, Tommy's workshop. I've heard of it, but I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, um, this time of year, we, we, we'll get a few requests every year for love spoons for St. Dwin Wins Day. And that's um, the 25th of January. Again, we're not big on uh, promoting stuff in Wales. It's not our forte, I'm afraid. So um, we, we, we try and promote it a little bit every year just to, to give a little bit of um, exposure to it through, through the things that we do. But yeah, St. Dwin Win, it's worth having a little look. Have a look online. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a tragic story, St. Dwin Wins, but it's the Welsh patron saint of lovers. So here in Wales, we have two, you have Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, and you have St. Dwin wins on the 25th of January. So we sort of... They look like vintage Henry Taylor gouges there. I, I don't think they are, are they? They're we've got, them. the gouges we've got, they're, um, they are vintage, they're Addis, and they are, um, they're Addis ones, they're Herring Brothers. Um, some of the Addis ones have been made in Sheffield. Most of them have been made in London. The other then, the other Herring Brothers ones, they're all made in London. There are a few Henry Taylors we've got, but they're more modern ones. That's a Henry Taylor, yeah. that one there. Um, that one there, that's a that's a more modern Sorby um, that we were that we were. We were actually fortunate enough somebody sent us that one. And that one there, that's a vintage Sorby gouge. And that is really useful. We use that one a lot. I think they uh, describe these as micro gouges and they're really useful for um, names, when we're carving names on the spoon. Another thing then, see, that you can do, you can put names, you can put dates, you can put initials, all sorts of different things that you can include upon your, your love spoon. Um, you know, to, to personalise it as well. They, they can reflect virtually all walks of life. Yeah, it's it's a sort of it's a tradition that can Im, it really embrace, can't it? It's yeah. um, and as I said, I know they have similar customs. There's similar customs in Scandinavia through things like Instagram. Uh, we see similar customs as well in in different uh, places like the Balkan countries and Russia. But as I said at the start, we do claim it here as, as a Welsh tradition. So you can see in this one, you, you, um, I'm constantly turning it around in the vice. Reason for that is, is I want to be working with the grain as much as possible. Um, we're, we're bringing out the, the different shapes in the design. So we've got two hearts. This then is, is a more modern, a more contemporary design. Um, but there's no rules or regs. What I've also done, I've got a few other spoons. I'll just put that one next to it because that's got a Celtic design. And a lot of people then automatically think uh, that Celtic designs are traditional love spoon symbols. Yeah, that's not true. Um, they're a more 
modern inclusion, but other carvers like ourselves recognize that the, um, the Celtic symbols, they're beautiful. So why not include them? We're, we're a Celtic nation here in Wales. So we include them in with the work that we do. We got a few other ones as well to demonstrate. Here we go. Swans, swans on a love spoon. We've got an interpretation for, for what it means. Um, again, anyone in the comments section, any thoughts on what a swan or swans upon a love spoon, what it can mean? Very romantic. <laughs> Indeed it is. Should we tell the story of when you carved your first swan on a love spoon? Yes, that's a good one. That day. There we are. Well, when dad carved his first uh, swan upon a love spoon, his, his mother-in-law looked at the love spoon and she asked him, why have you carved a duck? So, uh, and I can show you the spoon. Yeah, so he, uh, he did some work on the neck. And he, he assures me when he says he did some work on the neck, it was of the swan or duck. There it is. Do you want to show there that we one? go. There's that one there. It's a little bit dusty. There you go. And that's, that's, our, that's our little swan just in there. And it shows you, see, you can make your love spoon as elaborate yeah. or as, as simple as you want to. Sometimes as well, with love spoons, the, the message in a simple spoon can sometimes be more, um, more meaningful than in a, in a more, more elaborate spoon. And we've made love spoons. There's also no rules or regulations for uh, love spoons for different occasions. We basically, any occasion in life, you, we, we've done a love spoon to record it right through from births to sadly memorials and that sort of thing. But um, it's quite an interest, it'd be quite an interesting study for somebody. In, I mean, you, you did it in. Uh, yeah, I, I spent some time you, studying you, it. Yeah. It's part of your, your course. I did indeed, yeah. And it, it would be a very interesting one to see how the designs have changed over the years. Yeah, because there's definitely an evolution of, of designs. Now an interesting one as well, and this is slightly controversial, um, and I'd be interested to know what other people think of. Um, yeah, as Dad said, I studied, um, I studied uh, the love spoon tradition, and one thing I did sort of note is that very early love spoons and love spoons that were sort of over a hundred years old, they, they, they're extremely rare, aren't they, dude? Sorry, I... I love was, spoons, I was just explain it. I was reading the uh, comment I was... The love spoons, they... The, they, they, they like the fact that there are no rules on eggs. Yes, yeah, spot on. <laughs> yeah, love spoons, did over a hundred years old, they, they are extremely rare. Oh, yeah. Now, an yeah. interesting thing, and I'm going to say something controversial now, in the last ten years, there have been a lot of old early love spoons that have been appearing. Yeah. Now, you can read into that what, what, what you want, but, but I, I've been very interested to see um, in the antique world, there have been a number, I've been interested to see that um, there's an antiques um, market and a number of early love spoons with the traditional designs, they've been appearing on the, in, in sort of antique circles so yeah an interesting development on the tradition isn't it yeah because it, the, the thing is with wood you you know you can put a date on a love spoon yeah uh you know you can put for argument say 1920 yeah um but it doesn't necessarily mean that that spoon was made in 1920. that's right um, so just interesting just throwing that out there to two people as well um when you when you sort of go around there are a number of early love spoons in St. Fagans, but it, you'll see them appearing in, in antiques markets and um, they certainly seem to be appearing in larger volumes than I'd ever come across in anything that I'd studied um, and in anything that I'd, I'd previously, yeah, and definitely previously it, it come was, across. I mean, it started in the six, I mean, 1600s, yes. right? So well, seventeenth century. So yeah, sixteen hundreds. So yeah. Very few spoons from that era. Then of course the um, the seventeen hundreds then 
again, there would be very few. So it would be yeah. 1800s that these spoons were a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I just so just I just throw that out there to everybody. So yeah. it's something that I I've sort of we, um, we, come we across. Put a little question mark. How we, authentic are that's right. some of these? Um, because there are a number of questions. You know, we we're, we're always spoons, absolutely yeah. So 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 just anybody who comes across a vintage love spoon, um, just yeah, just be aware that that there aren't that many in existence because most of them would have been kept in, in sort of quite damp cottages and things like that. And unfortunately, they, they just wouldn't have stood the, exactly. the test of time. Yeah. So this sort of, um, this this thing, and, I, and especially our, our, our friends across the pond, as it's put, you know, any time you do see, um, just have a note of caution, any time you're thinking of buying a vintage love spoon, definitely check it all out and and really if you can get a little bit of advice on the authenticity of it yeah. it's a big thing it's a big thing for ourselves is is authenticity because there are ways and means of aging the wood that's right you know we we've we've actually um uh we we've actually we we tried and failed ourselves we were doing a video um we were going to demonstrate how to use ammonia but i used it was um cleaning ammonia which is slightly watered down so it didn't didn't work but yeah there are as dad says there are ways and means of aging and of course you can wood. Old timber as well yeah spot yeah. on <laughs> yeah but um yeah because I mean, it's it's and it it brings us on again to to that subject authenticity because we're very big a big part of what we do it's why we started taking um, things more seriously on YouTube. It, it suited us because we love to demonstrate. And Tommy's workshop is saying, like everything, it will be fashion that dictates some of the designs. And, and he's right. It, yeah, spot it, on. It is. That's another one in terms of fashion. Did anybody um, did anybody come across that? There was a Beyonce on the uh, cover of a, a Vogue magazine. We were getting these messages. And initially, I thought it was people sending me spam. Because I kept on getting sent these messages of um, Beyonce on the front of Vogue magazine. And after being sent it a few times, I stopped and looked at it. And what it was, the, the dress that she had was inspired by the Welsh love spoon. So yeah, have a, have a little look at that one. Um, the, the, the funny thing with that is that I couldn't really see it myself. Um, but there we are. Hey, all, all love spoons are like Bitcoin did. What's that? Old love the yeah. They're not making any more of them, are they? The old ones. No, there's no yeah, no, if if you can get an early love spoon, you've got some good value there. You may have noticed as well, it didn't explain that I've gone from the one love spoon. We finished off our treble clef, and I thought, there we are, we'll do our Cupid. So thinking in Valentine's. And again, you know, not a traditional symbol, but a popular, a popular design. And this is where as well you can you know, because you'll see a lot of love spoons where people will stick to certain designs. And it always baffles me because um, you've got so much freedom, so much flexibility to, to carve different different designs that, yeah, whatever, you know, there's no need to sort of take other designs. And the two love spoons that you've been really. carving, you know, there are two different shaped hearts there as well. So again, That's right. You know, again, designing the hearts, you know, and even... Some people don't even like a heart on a love spoon. Which yeah, absolutely. Strange, I know, but you know, we, we try to cater for everybody. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And when you're doing bespoke spoons, you know, we, we have we have all sorts of requests. Oh, there are somebody in uh, Tommy's workshop. I bought some ammonia to darken oak, but never used. Yeah, if you if you use that stuff, cool. The fumes yeah. just oh. we used we used just it was a cleaning one, and I thought, oh, we give it a try. Because it was um, it was five percent, so it wasn't as strong. But the fumes that you still got off that, my goodness, they it were does, they it were does strong. Work. I remember it does work. Yeah, it does. During my apprenticeship, I we used to use it to um, you know match in. Yeah. Old, if you had to darken old, a piece, yeah. to match it up. We, what it was, we used to. Um, you didn't dip it in the ammonia. You held it above. I, well, the I, ammonia. That's the right. Fumes, then. The fumes from the ammonia they they will they will darken it. But it's dangerous stuff. <laughs> we had a we had a particular um, celebrity in here who was involved in antiques, um, and they 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 were actually saying about the the traditional method, weren't they? Yeah. Which is to use manure. So yeah, uh, pig, pig, manure. pig manure. 
because of the ammonia from that, but the only problem with doing that is that your love spoon is going to be a bit smelly. There you go, so you can see us bringing out the shape of our Cupid. Again, the two pieces of wood I've chosen to, to work on today, they're two pieces of mahogany, but you can use, you know, that's the nice thing. And the wood, going back to symbols, the wood can tell a story in itself, because this one, the mahogany's got a reddish tint to it. So, you know, we have done it, we've, we've suggested before to people who are having a love spoon for, say, a ruby wedding anniversary, that it's appropriate. Um, you mentioned earlier what the spoon... The silver birch you can use. You know, what we say the spoon represents? Well, that's another part to it, yeah. Um, any thoughts, and again, it's open to interpretation, but we have thoughts on, on the actual spoon. Why a spoon? There well, we are. A knife or a fork. Because you'll see early examples of love spoons, as Dan's saying, knives and forks as well. Our own thoughts of why a spoon sort of caught, they, they cottoned onto it and used it, and again, this is our interpretation. Spoons are used for mixing and blending, bringing ingredients together. So, and we also then do link the love spoon tradition with the cowl spoon. Yeah, and you're mixing and blending the two hearts the, the together. The two hearts together. That's, that's what we so, think. We, we put a story on it. But again, open to interpretation. Other people will have other thoughts on, on what the spoon can represent. So you see, what I do for the, the Cupid, we just shape it all down and we shape it shape it around give it a little bit of depth to the carving and then afterwards to finish off the cupid we'll just do a little bit of a little bit of detail on the wings and when it comes to sort of designing you know you can get images from all sorts of different places now if you're a bit of an artist you can draw your design out I'm interested to know as well, any any sort of, is anybody going to have a go at designing their spoon now? Because we'd love to, if you do, you'll find our email in the, on our on our about page. You'll find our email address. We would and love to see. Is saying, when he makes jewellery boxes, he tries to keep the patina and finish from the original wood. Yeah. It makes much trial and error to match it on newly exposed cases. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, no wood. <laughs> the fact that it's such a natural material, it, it can be quite frustrating at times. You, you know... Um, or matching stuff Especially can be really know, cause, cause challenging. We, because we make the spokes rooms, Yeah. Um, you know, you, you oh, some of the stories with the wood, some of the frustrations. Uh, I'll ask everybody, anyone ever work with iDigbo? That's a frustrating wood because you, you'll carve it and you'll finish it off. And what, what we do a lot of, so we have a lot of visitors in and we put the initials on there. But with iDigbo, they, it, the, if you put oil on there, it soaks into the pores and the wood goes all blotchy. Right. And you, as soon as you do it, you think, ah, oh, no. And it, and it will, it'll go all blotchy. So yeah, you can get some real frustrations with wood. Um, another one we get, uh, the uh, Iroko. Yeah. And you put a tag, you, if you put a, a price tag on Iroko, it fades so quickly in the sunlight. After about two weeks. <laughs> After two weeks, you've got a square where you yeah. left your, your where yeah. you put the uh, price tag on there. Cherry has a tendency to do it as well. So yeah, frustrations with um, with wood, they, they are plenty, but... Midnight Joker, he's making uh, one for the couple that introduced him to Wiseman's. Oh, brilliant. Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's, that'd be interesting. Um, any sort of symbols, I'm thinking, you know, the... Uh, I mean, because they're, they're, they're a different... One thing, if there's a link with us here in Pembrokeshire, because he mentions that one there, is the Tudor Rose. Yeah. Because Henry Tudor was born in Pembrokeshire, uh, in Pembroke Castle. We, for, for Pembrokeshire, we use the... The, uh, the Tudor Rose, so that's one symbol you could consider using. It's an interesting symbol because, of course, it's, it's, it's for associated. Yorkshire, but it's for England as well. It's, and it, it's for Yorkshire, isn't it? The Yorkshire yeah. Rose, yeah. Rose is the same as the Tudor Rose. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that shows how, you know, a symbol can be used for, for different things. So, yeah, that's one symbol you can do. You've also got... Yeah, Rosewood, yeah, it is an excellent timber. 
Rosewood, yeah. we don't yeah. see a lot of that. No, no, that's, we, we need to go to, um, where do we go for? Somewhere like um, Yandles. 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 Don't know if any of you come across Yandles yeah, down in the west of England. Uh, Somerset. Yeah. Yeah. Somerset, just um, yeah, south of Bristol, not far from <laughs> yeah, Yeovil. Yeah, see, cherry as well, that changes colour. Of cherry. Your, <laughs> as you look at it, yeah. And, and cherry is a beautiful, <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful wood, but it's, it's another one. If, if we're scroll sawing the cherry, I put a new blade on it. Um, we're going to do a video on that soon as well. Um, yeah, we'll ask everybody again. Scroll saw blades. We're always saying how we use a Nikua, uh, Nikua number nine reverse tooth blade. Uh, any, other, any other thoughts? I've got a few blades on order to do a video. Um, there's, a, there's another company I saw on Reddit that somebody was suggesting. Just always interesting to, to know what other blades anybody else is using and sort of would recommend. Because we're always open to, to learning and open to, to sort of other people's ideas. This is the delicate cut, this one here. Because that one, ever so delicate, you've got to be careful. I'm always watching because they, they scroll saw that bit quite delicately. So there we are. That's our Cupid. I think I'll finish off working on the hearts. Another symbol as well. We've got a twist on the stem on this one. And a twist on the stem can represent binding growing together. And again, it's that Celtic, Celtic uh, inspiration. And that's what we do. We take inspiration from all sorts of different places, all sorts of different sources. There we are. So that is the love spoon and um, and symbols. Right, there's one, one comment there as well about how to get rosewood uh, from Midnight Joker. I won't tell anybody <laughs> how to get it, all right? Because they'll all be looking for it then. <laughs> yeah, it's... But you, yeah, you old... Um, we don't see a lot of that at all. That's right, you know. Um, we, it's a beautiful wood, and it's, when you, what I've noticed with that is the density, really dense timber when you, when you work with it, but the finish you get on it is, is stunning. Yeah. Definitely old furniture is a good idea. I, yeah. I, I know where there is one piece now, but I, 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 again, I'm not, I'm not telling anyone because I've got a feeling somebody come and nick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't, it, we don't see quite, a huge amount. It's quite hard going to carve. Well, it's not easy. It's Finishes really beautifully yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned jewellery boxes, didn't you? You know, you can do some beautiful um, jewellery boxes and things like that and um, all sorts. Nice stuff. Fair play. And that's... Um, it didn't... I don't think there was as much... There was a, a lot of teak came into Pembroke Dock. I don't think there was as much rosewood came in, was there? No, so? no, no. I mean, it's much more decorative. Rosewood would have been used in um, marquetry. That's it. Uh, you know, so it... it, it and the inlay it, and things like that, yeah, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The other timber as well that we, we do come across, and we planted a few we planted a few trees in the field behind is walnut. Yeah. And the... We find, I, I, I've always found that the, the native walnut carves better because a lot of people are familiar with black walnut, but our native walnut, it's a beautiful colour, yeah. beautiful character in it, and it carves really nicely as, as well. That's another interesting twist there for anybody that is, you know, carving loves, that is carving love spoons, um, maybe as a collection, like we have one each year. Yeah. Um, you know, we... I first started making them from teak. Yeah, when Dad nice started, because this is the thing where we say about rules and regs. When Dad started, you, you put sort of rules and regs, didn't you, on yourself? Yeah. yeah. And he I always carved it from teak, teak always then, signed it. Then I changed, so I started making out of a, a different wood. Yeah. For, for a certain reason. Yeah. Um, and then I started making a different wood every year. Yeah. You know, and that's nice then that you've got... It was just as well we started using. It's just as well we started using different woods because we'd have a lot of dark wood on the wall. Yeah. And now we've got you know a lot of timber to to contrast yeah. it. So just as well you change tack and um, yeah it gives it brightens it up. And the interesting thing as well of course is that it goes in fashions and darker woods. I would say now. What would you say is it probably a. 
a, a 40 60 split where it's sort of 40 percent darker woods and 60 percent lighter woods in terms of what we sell Ooh. so I, I would say um most most spoons are, are lighter color wood dear. that's right yeah so i would that's what i'm saying a 40 a four i'd go for a 40 60 split because we yeah. still sell a fair few uh, darker spoons when, when i say lighter um Oak, oak mid tones down. Mid, mid oak. Yeah. 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 It's, That's an interesting thing as well. We, we're forever getting messages about light oak, um, which is a bit of a, for ourselves, we're always, well, oak is oak. And that, that it's always difficult to, to sort of get, you know, it, it's difficult. I don't know if anybody else finds it where, when you, you, you're sort of dealing with the customer for them to understand that we can't sort of guarantee oak is oak some pieces are darker some people you know some pieces are lighter it's not a straightforward thing for us to oh, yeah, that's... that can be a bit challenging when somebody's yeah. asking for light oak because yeah. we we've, we've only got access to the oak that's... that we've got access to that's one of the advantages we've had this year we haven't had as many customers through the door so we haven't had to do uh, as many um... yeah for individuals then, you know what I mean? It's, That's uh... right. And it's interesting as well where, um, you know, we, we sell a lot online and selling online, the tastes of people seeing sort of a photo of a love spoon seems to be different than what they would go for, what they would choose to buy if they could actually see the spoons yeah. here, here in the shop. Yeah. Not massively. Yeah. There's another love spoon as well that i got on the put on the bench to show you've got that one there with the the daffodil that's a popular one see the national emblem and another interpretation for using a flower you hope that love will blossom or continue i know you one of our trade secrets now and uh what's that uh, one well you know we're saying why the reason we put, usually when we're selling online we have two basic timbers don't we? yeah well when you're selling online and yeah, we, we're giving away trade, trade secrets. Else of, uh, when you're selling online, the customer wants it as close to what they're looking at as possible. So, for instance, um, we do a collector's corner where we use unusual woods and we make sort of one-offs because you photograph the spoon itself. And the reason then we only offer two woods is because we, we, if we offer, say, 10 different woods, it, 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 we know we get a lot sort of sent back with people saying, oh, it's not the colour that I was expecting and things like that. So you still get it. You will still get that, that sort of thing. But the more you can standardise what you do when selling online, the, the, the better it is in, in some ways, unless you are selling the spoons as one-off individual yes. pieces. Tommy, you're saying white oak is an American thing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> spot on, yeah. And here in Wales, see, our, our oak that we get locally, it's quite wild. Um, not the easiest of oaks to, to carve, but beautiful character in the, in the grain. Um, bit challenging. I was carving, and it is as well, it's a bit, it's a little bit darker. It is a little bit darker. Nice thing though with the Love Spoon again, because you haven't got those rules and regs, you can use different woods, all sorts, all sorts of different colours and that, that that creates more interest. One of our favorites, we're thinking, we're gonna do a little promotion as well until Valentine's. Um, and we're gonna do, we're gonna just, well, we're thinking of, of doing a little promotion and that's with the juniper and just making a little unfinished heart of juniper because you get the beautiful color, but you get that beautiful perfume. Do you wanna show that one? So we're gonna give that and it can be used say in a drawer. Yeah, there we are, that's the juniper. There you go, beautiful stuff. But what we're gonna do with the juniper, we're gonna just scroll saw out a little heart and put it in with any Love Spoons purchased. And um, we'll leave it unfinished so you get that, that beautiful perfume. Oh, there's another one there, Dave. There we are. And if you didn't know, you would yeah. think it was... Um, yeah, that one there, the dancers, but that is, yeah, that's the juniper again. The only thing that gives it away that it's not you is the weight. Yeah. Yeah, when it's finished like that, it does, it looks just, just like the U. Right, what do you reckon? Should I finish this one off? Yeah, you can finish that one if you want to. Finish this one off for everybody to, yeah. to see. 
Yeah, you as well. That's an interesting one in terms of stories and symbolism and meanings because the you, some people say it's unlucky to bring it indoors. If that's the truth, we're very unlucky because we got it everywhere. Uh, but it's spalted wood. Yeah. Spalted, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't get Dad started on that. He's a joiner. Yeah, spalted. Yeah, spalted is an interesting one. The first thing with that, um, try and find it in the dictionary. The word spalted, we, we, we still can't find it in there. But I, I like spalted wood because it's got that beautiful colour and beautiful character. Um, I'm afraid Dad's an old school joiner and I, you, you turn your nose up a bit, don't you? Well, because it took me years to accept it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's finally getting round to accepting it, that it is, it is nice. And the interesting thing, you, you, you know, when it comes to the love spoons, if I got a, a, a beautiful piece of spalted beach, something like that, you will, you'll sell that more quickly yeah. than, than some of the timbers that haven't got that spalting in and haven't got the, the sort of, you know, where they've been, a bit of water's got into them in the drying or a bit of fungus, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's really popular. Spalted beach. Spalted beach, That's indeed. That's the popular one. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, don't get Dad started on it too much because he's a, he's a. You, you were trained as a joiner, and that would have all been thrown away, wouldn't it? As a. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you trained. Yeah. So so he is he is finally accepting it. Yeah. The spalted the spalted wood, but it's been a a long journey to get there, isn't it? Yeah. But it is popular and it gives you beautiful character. A lot of it as well with spalted wood depends on how far, how far gone it, it, it actually is. But yeah, beautiful stuff. Um, Bobby's spalts his own. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good way of doing it. If, you, if you're doing your own spalting, then you... It's only where the moisture has gone into it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If you're doing your own, you, you, you can ensure it's sort of more reliable. We have a lot of wood, see, we got links with like the local tree surgeons and things like that and they, they bring us in all sorts. We were very fortunate before Christmas they brought us in some, they brought us in some yew, didn't they? There we go. And I would love to at some stage, because they, they do some fascinating stuff, because they're the, the, one, the one person involved, they, they do chainsaw carving, don't they? So that's a, another... Fascinating thing. The timber we've got to mention at this time of the year is holly. Holly, yeah, the holly. holly. is a, a lovely wood for um, working with and um, it, it produces a beautiful finish as well. Yeah, absolutely. Just refocus that, just in case. And in this area, we are very fortunate. Um, Get it a lot in the hedgerows and things, yeah, don't we? we? We've planted quite a few holly trees down. That's what I mean today. <laughs> Yeah, sometime we'll have to we'll have to do a an outdoors an outdoors video yeah. showing everything that we're we're actually doing on site here because show some of the trees we've, we've got we've that. got a tree planting project and it's starting to bear fruit because unfortunately, see Wales very strong um, area for ash and you're just seeing trees because of lockdown. I've barely been out in the last. 10 months and the, one of the most striking things when I have been back out is how many trees have been cut down. I think you just got a comment on there, didn't you? No, I was just saying it's difficult to get juniper. Yeah, yeah juniper, yeah. that I get in yeah. from, I see it quite a lot on Reddit, the Americans, they, they, the, um, our American, uh, our uh, American friends, they use a lot of, um, Juniper, so they've got access to it. We only get hold of it through um, uh, it's, it's in Spain. That's where we get hold of it. Central Spain. I don't know whether it's a climate thing. Wouldn't have thought so. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have thought so. But yeah, you see it in, used in parts of America. On Reddit, you'll see some beautiful things made out of Juniper. One of my favourite timbers for the colour. We have here, we have more you and the word salted is only from the 50s or 60s. Right. And an American word. Ah, there we are. Uh, there we are. So it's another one where it's originating in, from the US. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful wood. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find it in my English dictionary. <laughs> probably knowing us, our dictionary is probably uh, from, bef from yeah. bef before it. There we go. So we're just 
we're going to finish off this twist on the stem and that hopefully gives you an idea this is this this live stream is very much it's our day job where we're we're talking about the tradition and uh, throughout 2020 we haven't had the opportunity to do this much because of lockdown we used to have in several thousand people through in a year and we're explaining the tradition explaining what we do and sharing it with people demonstrating the carving so it's been nice for us to be able to do this a nice way to start the new year uh, yeah. Lindquist. Right? Mark Lindquist. Yeah. His father. That's where the uh, um, idea came Ah, right. There we are. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Yeah, fantastic. It's always good to know. This is the thing. That's what I was asking as well about the scroll saw blades, because it's always good. We're always interested in learning new things, new ideas. Um, that's why we. You know, hopefully through building up sort of community, we can help one another out and give different ideas and share different thoughts. Definitely as well, if anyone's going to have a go at um, making your own spoon, keep us in the loop. Be great to know how you're getting on and great to know what sort of symbols and design that you've uh, decided to have a go at. There we are. That's our first little demonstration for the year. We've got that one there. And we've got that one there, like so. So what I'll do from there, I'll take that in next door. We'll put that on the belt sander just to take that paper off. So the paper on the front of there, we take all of that off. We'll then, we've got to sand out the bowl. Oh, so I got to, looking at that, I got to carve out the bowls on those two spoons, sand it all out. And then again, three coats of shellac sand and sealer, rubbing it down in between each coat. Brilliant, there we are. Thank you all for joining us. And as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. Thank you.